Cross-checking our way into another edition of the Bar Down Podcast, here's the rundown of what we'll be talking about today. You will respect our empty cage as we discuss the empty netter heard around the world. We take a look at all the bubble playoff teams deciding who will actually make it come April. We'll also commiserate over just how boring the trade deadline's gonna be in this room. If you think the Lombardi Trophy looks more like a marketing award than a sports trophy, you're gonna like this edition of Don't Think, Just Tweet. And yes, finally, we'll be doing a tier list on the greatest empty net goals of all time, which is way more entertaining than you would think. Welcome into this room. Maybe the best intro to any podcast we've ever had. I, like, I always like when we clap at the beginning of the podcast. There was one, it might have just been a live stream or something, but where we just start and like everybody's just clapping. And it was, it was it's really electric. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to the Bar Down Podcast. <laughs> wow. It's weird seeing you there, by the I way. know, man. I know. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you, Z. Yeah, Luca, Sam, and uh, Hein, and Marissa all at the Super Bowl. So they will not be in this edition of the Bar Down Podcast because they're having all way of more them. fun. All of them are such regular members of this. <laughs> <laughs> enough fair enough uh let's just get right into it i love uh, it this this lit up the group chat actually just between <laughs> jesse and sam mostly i actually saw it with, with obviously the ridley greg cross check i mean sorry it's morgan riley's cross check it's ridley greg's face uh an empty net goal the the first question that i guess i'll toss out onto you guys over here is did you have a problem with the empty net goal did you have a problem with the cross check, Corwin? As the resident worn in Leafs fan, yeah, I think I'm wearing one of my older ones. Where's it? Where's the other hat? Hat home somewhere? <laughs> no, no, the oh, he's got team. a good one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll have to show it off. We'll, 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 we'll find it out. But but uh, basically, I kind of just loved everything about it. I thought it was like it was sick. I think like. I don't know. I know, like, I feel like you're probably going to – I saw some of your tweets, and part of the reason I didn't chime in was because I was like, I'll save it for the pod. I love saving for the pod. Uh, yeah, save it, save it for the pod. Did you Let's already it. tweet it? I don't go on Twitter. I so. did. T- I tweeted after it happened because the Jets game ended, okay? Big win over the Penguins, not a big deal. Needed that you kinda one. You kind of needed it. Yeah, you guys that were one. It was that one. a big needed deal. Needed that one. Needed that one. <laughs> but, you know, we, we play the Sharks also uh, tomorrow night, so we should hopefully get a win there. Um but anyways, it switched to the to the Leafs Sands game. I was like, okay, like I'll watch the rest of it. Had I think I had my first Saturday night to myself in around two and a half years. So I was like, I'm just gonna chill on the couch and watch, just like hang. Kind of nice. It was very nice. It was actually very nice. And then, uh, yeah, all the, all of a sudden I see like Ridley Greg fire <laughs> a clapper, and I'm just like, that was hilarious. And then you know, Corn, I'll let you talk first, and then I'll give my opinion. Yeah, yeah, because because basically my thing is like. I know everybody was like, oh, what a horrible, dangerous play and, like, what all these things. I, I just loved every part of it. I thought the Ridley Greg thing was hilarious. I thought that's, like, such a funny thing to do. I think he absolutely knows what he's doing because I think we've all played th- played hockey and done things that you're like, oh, that's going to piss people off for sure. <laughs> like he- I don't do that, but I have seen it from you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I kind of love that. Like, that, I, I thought it was a sick move and, like, like I genuinely respect him so much for doing it. I know people are like, oh, like oh, th- that's it. Like again, that was expected. Or what was the? What did Sheldon Keefe say? What did he say? Like uh, it was appropriate. It was appropriate. It was appropriate. Yeah, I was yeah, like, <laughs> like I don't get. I don't know. I not do, the word I, I'd use. I, like I get. His, I get why he said that. Well, I do appropriate's think, a funny word. I know, and he's gonna get like I'm a hefty suspension, which is a little nuts to me because the only thing I will say is like I do think like. Like, first of all, Ridley Greg is fine. Like, <laughs> he got up after, and I'm assuming we'll play the next game. There's been no injury updates or anything about him. So I'm pretty sure he's totally fine, So which which makes it great because, like, then I don't have to feel bad about the cross check. It's all fun. It's, it was just, like, a great entertaining moment that I love that it fires up the rivalry. And I get from some people's perspective, they'll be like, oh, you're, you're punishing for intent. And then – but, like, I don't know. That's a tough one to measure intent. I do, like – he does hit his shoulder first Seems and right up into clear what his face. intent was. was no, but it I, was to hit I him would, in the face. I don't think it was to hit him in the face. If you look at it, like he hits his shoulder and then it rides up into his face, which like you can't go in that recklessly and that high. Like yeah. you, and that's why he should absolutely be suspended. I mean, like I a, don't think Mark Scheife was necessarily trying yeah. to hit Jake Evans in the head, but he kind of just ran his clock and got suspended four games for it as a first-time offender. So, I was going to say, but, so here, let me... A, let me answer that. At least. I was gonna. I'll probably answer for you to some degree in one second. I'll, I'll toss it over to Jesse here because 
I'm somewhere in between the two of you. But I agree, spicy for the Battle of Ontario. So the entertainment value, <laughs> hilarious. But quite clearly, there were people who disagreed as far as how this is going to be handled from this point and also how much they were kind of laughing at the whole incident. Are, is that where okay. you kind of are? To be honest, like I actually don't feel that differently than Corwin f feels, but I just, I just didn't like the way... Like, Riley could have done anything. Like, he could have, like, dropped his gloves. Even if the cross-check was, like, lower. Or, like, even if he, like, two-handed him in the back of the leg, I would be like, that's fine. I just, like, don't think a cross-check. And whether, like, even if it rolled the shoulder or whatever, I think you need to be very careful when you're actually like, deliberately cross-checking someone in the head. Especially, like, yeah, it's, like, it's old-time hockey. It's, like, all this stuff. But it's, like, in a league that especially is trying to kind of get rid of head injuries, I just think actually going up to someone emotionally and cross-checking them in the head is just, like, it's just a stupid thing to do. And, like, I, like, I don't mind. I like the fact that Morgan Riley responded. Like, I like it. I just, like, I just think he literally could have done anything else. I, I just think mm -hmm. taking, like, actually cross-checking him to the head, like, that was a dangerous, scary play. And was Ridley Gregg, like, classless for doing what he did? Yeah. Was it funny? Yeah, it was funny. Should he have probably braced himself for more of a response? Yeah, that's a little... A hundred percent. I like how you just kind of yeah. chill and, like... Yeah, yeah he's just like, what? <laughs> he's like, what? But, like, I, I, I still just think, though, that, like, the actual action of cross-checking someone in the head, like, the way in which Riley did it was just, like, it was a dangerous play. And I think that, like, it, it, it just shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. But, like, I get it. It's, it was an emotional play. Riley's gonna get suspended. I don't think it's like the end of the world. I think you're right. It's like he didn't get injured. It's fine, but like, it could have been a lot worse. Corwin, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I represented what you wanted to say at all. I, I realized that once I said it. So, <laughs> so go ahead and represent yourself. Well, I, I again, I didn't bring up the Mark Shifley thing, but like, I think Please that don't. is. I'd love to know. I think that is so different. Yeah. Like, I had to. I, yeah. Well, no. The only reason I bring it up is because so many people brought my old tweet back up yeah. on Saturday, and it got me thinking. Like. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> you should have my opinion. Is that what we're I will say, I didn't I didn't see Morgan Riley go in there and I didn't go, what a nice guy. What a nice guy. <laughs> no, but he, he, is a nice, he is a nice guy. 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 He is. But people are defending Morgan Riley. Like, oh, what a beauty. You know, like what a beauty. Just just two hand and it's old time hockey. And for me, I'm just like, you know what? It's like if the only the only reason I bring Shifley up is because I think that as as players, they're kind of similar. Like they're both for the, that was Mark Shifley's that was he was a first time offender. This is Morgan Riley's first time offense. And what I'm saying is that it just depends how you look at each play. I actually think that Morgan Riley's play was more malicious than Shifley's. That's my opinion. No, nah, I, I, I totally I really disagree. I really disagree vehemently that. disagree that's with fine. that. That's, but that's that, okay. That, yeah. that, that, that's fine. I think that, like, in a lot of ways, first of all, Shifley should not have gone four games in the playoffs as a first time offender. I think that was, I still think that that was a ridiculous <laughs> amount of games for him to get. I think he should have gone maybe two tops. Shifley actually made, like, a bit of a. Sure, he like what came all the way from the other side of the rink, but he actually made a hit. It was like a hockey play. At the I, same time. I guess, but Riley we <laughs> deliberately takes a stick and like I'm gonna freaking two hand this guy in the head. Like I just thought, I just felt like Riley's play was a little meaner, whereas Shively's play was like, oh my god. But I don't know. That's my opinion. Yeah, sure, That's my opinion. sure, sure. I, I guess my my whole thought on it, and I said this to Jesse earlier was just like yeah clearly you shouldn't be doing that as a form of response to an empty netter but it reminded me of because this has happened before where i've been on a night out with my friends and one of them does something give me you know, like this guy's friends up dude yeah. cross-checking no cross -check. no 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 opposite uh, as in they'll do something stupid and i i've been there where it happened and one of them got knocked out and I was like, clearly I wasn't like, whoa, you deserve to be knocked out. And I was like, that's nuts. You shouldn't have you know, gone to that level. But then when I looked at the infraction, I was like, hey, man, you got to be smarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. some of this stuff, you got to be smarter. You know, you play stupid games and you win stupid prizes. I, I don't have any form of real empathy for you. That's but, the, Yeah. Sorry, Gordon. The last thing I was going to say is that's one thing that Z kept saying earlier is that like no one's going to feel bad for Ridley Gregg. No. And to your point. I don't think a single person feels bad for Ridley Gregg. I think everyone understands that he had he had something coming. But it is weird because I'm I'm caught between both I don't things. Even say I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it was I'm, just like if something happened, you can't be upset. I don't mean it from like, whoa, that was warranted because I don't mean that at all. Yeah, because it's more of like you expect a scrum after and whatever. Totally. And the only thing I'll say from Riley's perspective is that like I do get that like people are like, oh, you just gotta fight him and all this stuff, and I'm like. Like the way that it's funny because the way that Ridley Gregg kind of approached it, like I, I just don't ever see a scenario that it would have happened that way. Because if Riley drop, drops his gloves and just punches him, 
it's the exact same reaction from people that like, how dare he sucker punch him in this thing. And I know you don't like have to sucker punch him, but I just can't see in an emotional moment like that. Somebody like stepping back a couple steps, taking their gloves totally. off and going like, now's no, time yeah. Ridley. <laughs> like, Let's, so that's how these mistakes happen. It's yeah, just like you don't think about it. That's why you've done it. And what you're getting penalized for is the fact that you don't have composure. I yeah. do think there is a difference though between going up to someone and like kind of giving them a punch in the face and maybe not maybe you might say my, what's the difference but I do think there's a difference between that and like actually taking your stick and like deliberately being like right to the dome but again I, I, again we're throwing deliberately out there quite a bit they're like I don't think we can really say like he intentionally walked up and was like, I'm going to cross check this guy in the head. Like, I will say the same thing I said to Jesse on his thing of with the Mark Shifley where I'm like, I actually don't think that matters. I mean, if that's what happened, then that's what happens. So no, I agree. I, but I, I know but, they rule things differently. It's just, if I were ruling, I'd be like, I don't know if you, you hit the guy in the head you know, or you, you, it, it doesn't matter if it's slip. Like that's yeah, I, what happened. I agree with that. I, and that's why I said he should be suspended. Like I'm not, I'm not arguing that at all. I'm how more, many games do you think he's going to get? How many do you think he's going to get or do I, how many do I think he should get? Both. To say what you think's fair, like Not four, you, yeah. four, I'd be like, I'd still honestly probably be like, yeah, it's a, it's a little much, but like, I, that's fine, and like, I, I'd be fine with that. I think like the, they do factor injuries into these, and like yeah. the guy is fine, and like you look at like David Prawn's one where he like puts Dylan Long, puts Dylan Larkin like unconscious on the play yeah. is like, that's just a way uglier thing to me and like i don't know i get that like whatever it is um somewhat more about the intent i guess but i just there just seems to be a lot of inconsistency more than anything i'm fine with the suspension i don't really care he'll probably get like six i'm guessing speaking of consistency the standings have been wonderfully inconsistent this year. This has been like one of the most fun years as far as like playoff shakeups go with wild card teams and who's actually going to make up the second and third spot. Less so, the top of the divisions has been pretty strong throughout uh, for people holding on. Maybe bar the Pacific and the Central where they still could get pretty, pretty dicey. Uh, but, you know, we thought it'd be fun right now to take a look at two things. First, Team who is currently occupying a playoff spot who you think will not be there come April. And a team who's currently on the outside that you think will. Jesse, would you like to start this one? In the East, it's pretty easy to say Detroit just because they're holding on to the last spot. But who knows? I look at all the other teams. I look at all the other teams in the East and I say, I think all these other, all these other teams are going to make it. I mean, I'd be shocked if the Leafs didn't make it. It'd be insane. If I think that would have been it. your low-hanging fruit, so I'm glad that you went for another one. Well, but. I just think it would be absolutely nuts if they didn't, and I think that they will find a way to figure it out because if they don't make... Oh, my God. If they don't make the playoffs, then Sheldon Keefe's ass is so grass. Yeah. And we well, talk enough right, about yeah. them anyways. But Well, no, no, but, like, who knows? I mean, I think I give props to the, to the Red Wings for even being there in the first place, being in the hunt. The funny thing is their year has gone how like the Sabres and Sanders really should have as well. Like they, there was that th those three teams were kind of like, okay, like punch upwards and they're the, doing the what Red they're Wings? supposed to. Yeah. In the hunt. They're in the hunt firmly in there and they can look at their trade deadline as, okay, well, what do you want to do? Buyers, sellers, whatever it is. Like it's a real option, which is. Yeah. Sabres so, and Sanders so, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the East I could see, I don't know. Like it, it's so weird to me to think that the Devils might not make the playoffs. I feel like they would be my. It's so nuts. It's nuts. They're they're didn't, too talented. I feel didn't like, you guys have them winning the division? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the Devils would be the team that could just get on a heater and just go. But at this point, it's kind of like, who are the Devils? Like, what's going on with them? Like, you'd expect them to be a little better than they are right now. They've had they a have, lot of injuries. Hughes, Hughes has not been. Hughes hasn't really been able to stay too healthy, which sucks. I, sh I shouldn't say hasn't been able to stay healthy. He just hasn't been healthy. Um, but another thing, too, for me, like the most interesting team to watch at the trade deadline is going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. What's going on with that squad? Are they going to be selling? Are they going for it? The Gunsel it's, stuff, clearly. It's like the one interesting part of the whole trade deadline. Because, I mean, do you just stick to your future of what you are, which clearly is not working, but, like, you can't not have Gunsel or Gensel, certain. Well, it's like what, like, what do you do if you're do best? You come over and clearly you were tasked with surrounding Crosby with some talent, and he's tried surrounding him with some talent and brings in Riley Smith. Riley Smith hasn't really been great. There's rumors that he, like, already wants out of Pittsburgh. 
uh, from I think I saw I thought I saw something on that that they'd, they'd be willing to trade him. And then I got like Gensel. Like, are they just going to trade Gensel? Are they going to be able to afford Gensel in the future? And then it's like, okay, if you get rid of all these guys, like, are you going to try to rebuild around a thirty? What what is Crosby now? Like a, around a turning thirty seven year old Sidney Crosby? Are you going to try to trade Crosby while his value is so unbelievable? What? Guys in his prime. Guys permanently he is, in his he prime. Is, but 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 Pittsburgh doesn't seem to have that many great prospects in their in the cupboard. And the rest of these guys that Crosby grew up with, Latang, Malcolm, they're all getting older. Like, what's going on here? Like, I just feel like this team's kind of in purgatory a little bit. Yeah, I don't. Funny enough, like, well, now you've mentioned all the teams, but <laughs> well, I didn't say anyone in the West. Jesse's like, you know what? I'm not gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick all. I didn't say anyone. I didn't say anyone in the West. So you now you have the whole West to yourself, Corwin. Go ahead. Well, so I, I do. I'll just throw out a quick one. I do think like the Red Wings are the easy one. I just don't think they're that good. And then I think I think I do think the Penguins are going to be the team that makes it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they squeak in. Okay, now I'm going to push you a little bit there because I can I can feel the anger emanating from some Red Wings fans as we casually dismiss their hopes. Is there any particular reason you don't believe in them? Or I mean. <laughs> I've I haven't really believed in them from the beginning. I just like it's not. I don't mean to be rude. I, like I, it just when I look at the team, when I watch them play, I just don't picture them in the same crop as the rest of the playoff teams. I think they still have a little bit to go. I think uh, there's still just guys like again, like when you started off the year with the Brinkett Larkin uh, Raymond being like one of the best lines in hockey. I just don't think they're at that level right now and. Again, I, I think there's just, like, you can look at a lot of different holes in the team that I don't think their defense are strong enough. I don't think, like, which, like, I think you can make up for in different places, but you need kind of top-end talent at the top of your lineup to kind of carry you through that. For that, I think some of these other teams have similar holes, but I think their top-end talent's a little bit better than Detroit's. And, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I, I, I think Pittsburgh's a pretty solid team. Like, I actually, I just think they're good. I think they... Have, uh, they, sometimes, they, man. They, sometimes they, they, they're so bad. Not, not yet. Yeah, not to go at your Red Wings argument. Sure, we'll, we'll say that. I agree with you. They could easily fall out there. But the Penguins, like, I could definitely see them just not making it because, like, they're so inconsistent. They just yeah, have well, been all year. I know. Well, I mean, like, their defense isn't that good. Yeah. And like, guys who like Ricard Raquel has not been good this year. What does he have? Like six or seven goals this year. Last year he was filling the net. I, again, like, I feel like a guy like Riley Smith, like, has been the good. The only reason I say this, I, I saw. The Penguins actually looked really good against us the first game. But then the second game, I get they were coming off of a back, off of a back to back because they played Minnesota the night before. But I'm just looking at Pittsburgh. I'm like, no one's other than Crosby. Like, no one really was looking that good. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's just one game. But also, I'm pretty sure Jari leads the league in shutouts. Am I crazy for saying that? He's Six. having a good year. He's having a great year. Uh, it, it just, I, I don't know. I feel like Pittsburgh is such an inconsistent team. I agree. Like, like, sorry again. Like, I'm splitting hairs. These are guys at the bottom. No, no, no. You said they would win it all. But the thing is, if Pittsburgh does get in the playoffs, (laughs) if Pittsburgh gets in the playoffs, they could win it all. So it's going to be interesting. Like, you never know. Or they could lose to the Rangers again. Hopefully. You know what? I I think Dubis has an insane task ahead of him. He's got to make a decision, and that's going to come from the top. That's going to come from ownership. What direction does the team want to go in? But it's just like, Pittsburgh could just. Can you imagine if they just sold everyone, restocked, and just had this unbelievable team? Like it's and, way more interesting if they're bad than sure. if than if Detroit just do, misses it. Do but, we do our yearly thing of like, oh man, Sidney Crosby's from Nova Scotia. Philly, <laughs> 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 him and Nathan. Who? Yeah. Get him to Colorado. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. I think we can just acknowledge that permanently. Never know, man. That guy's gonna retire. Now this the year's the year, you know. No. But uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Kyle Dubas has such a rich history of trading stars. <laughs> uh, but Western Conference, I'm gonna go. Oh, that's so boring. There's one team I think that would be kind of exciting to to say like could slip in there. Like the, I'm assuming you're saying the exciting team is Calgary. Yeah, but I think the Blues. I just, I don't. Again, the Blues are kind of like the Red Wings of the West for me. Maybe the Blues are heating up a little right now. But like, well, we really thought about this segment. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, let's talk about teams we don't want to talk about. How about something we do want to talk about? Because we're gonna have to talk about it for nine hours. Uh, the trade deadline. <sighs> That's gonna be tough. It's going to be tough. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at the TSN trade bait board. Uh, names that are now off it, clearly Lindholm, Monahan, gone. 
Yeah. Name still Sorry, on. Nick. Just want to clarify something about the whole Nick Suzuki thing. I saw him the day after uh, at the All Star at the All Star game after some media availability. We hugged it out and like I think yeah, I, I think Nick just kind of has a bit more of a, a dry sense of humor, which is pretty funny in my just, opinion. Just to fill yeah. in the blank there, in case because you if you didn't see it, we were doing a podcast in this room. Uh, I think Sean Monahan had been traded to the Jets within half an hour, an hour maybe total, and we had Nick Suzuki here because there's a bunch of Bauer athletes. And Jesse, and just trying to be excited about getting a new player to his team and not considering that the guy sitting right in front of him was teammates with Sean Manahan no more than 30 minutes earlier, was like, oh, man, yeah, that's why people go to Winnipeg. Winnipeg's the best. I can't wait to have Sean. And then, dagger. Yeah. I was obviously surprised people were so, like, it oh, was, like, like, oh, how dare you do I mean, it was, it was listen, funny. It was funny, like, because he picked up on that, like, ooh. It was definitely like a ooh, like, because you did it accidentally. You were excited yeah, of course. about your guy. He's also got the... Yeah. He's got, like, such a dry sense of humor that, like, it just... he. I think he was messing with me. The way he yeah. responded... I don't know if he was messing with me or if it's just the way he is. Like, he just responded in such a... It was such a funny response that he made. Yeah. I, I genuinely think he was. Because yeah. as you said, like, that's just how he spoke. The, period. Yeah. I, I honestly think he was... I don't think he was mad about it. I think he definitely was like, okay, man, like, you could have been more subtle with that. But I don't think he was mad at you at any point. The yeah. best part is when he's just like, he's like looking away. He's like, yeah, it happened like a half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, Sean Monahan not on that board. The name's Chris Tanev. Sean Walker, Tarasenko, Jake Allen, uh, and Adam Enrique. Uh, here's another um, uh, empty netter for us. Oh, a whole list of them. Oh, we're doing that now. We're doing that now. Okay, we're getting into it. <laughs> we're ranking empty netters. <laughs> this guy is Struggling. dying to yeah. do it. Battling yeah. through this. Battling. Um. So basically, we've created an entire tier list of some of the greatest empty net moments of all time. Pray tell why. And then moments or goals. 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 Yeah, yeah. sorry. Not because there is a, there have been some great empty net moments. I asked right? about the Patrick Stefan one. Like Patrick that's Stephane. that's the greatest empty net moment of all Ever. time. One, two, Ever. Because he didn't score in case somehow you, you haven't seen that clip. It's incredible. Um but yes, this is obviously all because of Ridley Gregg's amazing oh, slap shot. Yes, yeah. So off of Ridley Gregg, because again, like going back to the top. That was awesome. Uh, well, I guess you'll see in the rankings where we decide to rank it. So this is just some of the most memorable empty net goals of all time. I'm gonna I'm, well, I'm gonna show you guys the goals once uh, once we actually go up to rank them. So you guys have seen this one because I showed it to you right before the podcast. Okay. But, uh, do you well, guys want to start off with? Do you want Do you want to go? Sure. Numero one. Numero one is David Pasternak. He actually smacked a puck out of the air. And then is that the clip you showed us before? Yeah, I don't remember that part of it even, oh. and I already liked it. It's fancier than your average empty net goal. That's that's for sure. I Woo. mean, silky. It's a great move. Now you want me to rank it though? Yeah. What's their tiers? What are the tiers here? The best A, B, C, D, the worst. We're gonna creme de la crop no. for our guy here. <laughs> what? Because I did that for the jersey tier list, and I was like, this is kind of confusing because. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't know. I just like having D there too. I don't like A, B, C, and we need a D. This is like cool, but like I'm, I'm being honest. Like the second playthrough, like, and I guess we are ranking empty netters, so I should temper my expectations. <laughs> I'll give it a B. It's not a good. Honestly, we're trying to sell the people on the segment. There's way better ones. There are like way better ones. So, so that, that, is B. Probably... Yeah, B. I'm gonna give it. I, it, it was pretty nice though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. No, like it's that great, was solid. Yeah. I, I mean, mean but, but they're all gonna be pretty decent. So like, we should have asked him when he was here. Instead, you guys asked him a beer. Which was a great thing it's to ask. Good thing we did. People love that you did. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, was, that was a fun one. He's oh, passionate yeah. about it. I don't even know if we really asked him. We were just kind of uh, yeah. I guess I was like, do you miss the beer there? <laughs> was, yeah. That guy was swagged out, man. Like honestly, when he came in, I was just like, this guy's just like dressed as well too. He's just like yeah. he looked cool as hell. He did not look like a hockey player. He yeah. is cool as hell. He's a cool guy. Yeah. The next one, I think you guys are gonna like this one because it's Miko Rantanen. And he goes bar down from the opposite blue line. <laughs> wow. wow. Just yeah. like our Where boy Sam. Sam. Yeah. Where is he? I feel like people don't even know why we ever I know. We that. say that all the time and no one understands. It's for a it. trick so, shot video. And Sam this. had to say it like 900 times. And he was so far from doing it. And so he'd go, I'm going to go bar down from the opposite blue line. And he like landed at the other blue line. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. 15 seconds left. Miko sends it all the way down. He scores. Mm. Oh yeah, that noise. That sound it's very golf like with the sound. Yeah. You know like when it hits the like the yeah. the cup. 
Because yeah. it doesn't, yeah, it's a ping, but like, I it, it sounds sad. more golf like to me. I get what you mean, but I love that one personally. Uh, yeah. Without the sound, maybe a D. With the sound, it's a C. <laughs> I'm not that You're into the that side. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm ranked. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't matter exactly. It doesn't matter what I think. I'm going to put that B for now. Okay. Yeah. We'll okay. Jesse, you got like the next it. one. I like it. You I like, like B? it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So, this one is. Third one. The third one, Mike Ribeiro off the face off. He went for it. He just shoots it from there, right? Oh, there. wow. That's clever. And it worked. That's pretty good. Very nice play, and I'm going to stick it in an A. Uh, okay, so the next one up is Z. You're with uh, Ovi's empty netter from the weekend, actually. That oh, okay. Was his to take the all-time hey, lead well, in empty net goals. Let's watch it Did again. you see the goal? Yeah, let's watch it again, though. You know, we got in case people at home haven't seen it. In case I haven't seen it. Pasternak had it deflected. Banked ahead by Ovechkin with empty net. Alex Ovechkin scores! Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Did you see that little, like, yeah. the end? That look, that's the most beer league looking thing I've ever seen him do. Man, Ovi's on a heater right now. I think he scored three straight. <laughs> just laughing because, like, heater, and we just watch, like, an empty netter goal that looks so un. <laughs> that goal, <laughs> that goal is kind of heat. And then he works so hard. Yeah, like, he was struck. Like, he was like, these will matter by the end. I the need step. these. He needs those empty netters for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Go, yeah. And also, Crosby Ovi quiz is now out. So, wow. There Enjoy we go. that. Okay, so where do you rank that one? Not high. <laughs> yeah, I know that's like the record breaker, but mm. it's a pretty relevant record. Mm. It is re- it's relevant to this tier. Like so, uh, within this tier, I kind of have to respect it. Do you? No, D. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It Come wasn't now. It wasn't that special. I don't think we're gonna remember that one. That no. Much. That looked like an empty net goal. Yeah. The that main... looks like oh, like I you you would have had your back turned. You would have been walking up, <laughs> yeah. like leaving the building if it wasn't your team. I honestly don't even know if he knew. That he, like, broke a record or with it or whatever. Yeah, it'd be weird to track that. Yeah. Tonight's the night that if I score an empty netter, I've scored more than anyone else in history. There's no way that guy's ever thought that. Yeah, it's not really something that you should be that proud of. Yeah. I, yeah. Especially don't, with his career. Don't be proud of it. No. Like, uh, if, you, if you were, like, I someone who what didn't have his career, I could see you being like, this is kind of cool because, like, I might not hold any yeah. other record. Yeah. They're saying it's fraudulent. I wasn't going that far, <laughs> <laughs> but I see your point. So I love him. I am up with Gretz. So this one, if you guys want to watch this, Wayne Gretzky. He raised it. Wow. Nah, I don't know if I saw that. Yes, he did. He was looking at the screen. Yeah, it I, it I, hit I a I chip in that. the ice. You know what I'm learning from this list? Empty netter goals really are boring. <laughs> no, but so they, some of them are sweet. 50, so they celebrated pretty hard. Fifty and thirty-nine. That's kind of a cool moment. Like I don't. Like, I, historically speaking, it's like the OV one. It has to be on the list for the history of an empty netter. Yeah. But the, the act it is itself. Kind of a, it's kind of a bummer that that moment happened like that. Yeah. Like, you'd probably rather. Like, if you were in a video game, you, like, I wouldn't do it. Although. Like, I'd be like, nah, I'm clapping that next game. But would they celebrate that hard if it wasn't an empty netter? You know what I mean? Because, like, they slid into the corner. They're piling on each other. Do you think they would have celebrated that hard like for it, 50 and 39? if, Like, if it was, what, second period, first period? Yeah. Probably mm-hmm. not, right? So it does kind of create a unique moment. It's a good question. Because if they did, someone's getting cross-checked in the shoulder that goes up into the neck. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. It might go directly yeah, to the you, neck. Yeah, you that. have to. You have to. <laughs> you got to do it. You have to do it. Uh, so <laughs> just, I, Jesse's just out of You got to. I'm going to do a C on that one. That's, that's really high. That was not a good goal. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm I mean, not ranking the goal. It's a great I'm piece of history. Okay. Yeah, like, Ovi's was nicer, but... <laughs> Gretzky's was 50 and 39, you know? Well, no, it's actually, it's kind of perfect because, yeah, Ovi's was a D. <laughs> and then, was Ovi's nicer? I thought Ovi's was nicer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess he did work harder for it, probably. They're both, they're like two <laughs> empty night goals, if I'm being honest, but like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You guys enjoying this one? Yeah. Can I just say something? When Corwin texted this into the group, I was like, I'm not that interested in that. And then he was like, oh, great idea. And I was like, I don't yeah. have another idea to replace yeah. it with. So I guess, like, maybe there's just something I'm missing. I was like, there's this- nothing I'm missing. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be this is gonna be hilarious. <laughs> These are the two most boring goals. Let's fire up the next one. I'm up. Don't give me any more micro. No, no. Yeah. I promise you, I got some good questions, but don't think just tweet. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna we're still having fun. You know? Yeah, we're having a great time. Hope you guys are too. <laughs> Let's hit the accelerator. Right? Yeah, we have to pick up pizzas in like an hour and fifteen minutes. We might not make it. 
So there's also there's another this is a fun one where <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, this is a fun one. Callie Johansson. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Oh my god. Damn it. Just roll the tape. We just show the potato. We just show the potato. That's the goal. What no, happened? no, wait. It's Look. literally in 140p. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. wait, wait, wait. So, oh my god, it looks like an 8 bit game. This is a playoff game, by the way. Shot by a 140p potato. May 15th, 1998, <laughs> Eastern Conference semifinals. Callie Johansson goes in. Oh. oh, he passed it to him. Oh, no, 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 no. He waited it out. Wait, he waited, he waited to it burn out. more clock and just stood in front of the net with the puck and oh. waited. Oh, dude, you should have started with that. The other ones were terrible until this one. Wait, why didn't choose the order? You know, move the freestylers where they go and they waited the net and they hit it in with their head yeah. and like they'll go on the ground. That's like, and that's in the playoffs. That's playoffs yeah. too. And that's then, an, that's the that's the best so far. That was kind of boss. No, I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it a B. No, give it an A. A B? A B? Come on. The rest of them were so bad. <laughs> All of them have been D's. Fine. An A, an A <laughs> This for is actually like an A or the an best. An A for the disrespect. Uh, yeah. So, but, but also, I will say, the funny thing about that one is guess who it was against? The, uh, the Penguins? The Ottawa the Senators. Senators. Oh, was it? And they were pissed. Yeah. Oh, they, wow. They're, Fire it up. They're coming now out. We can the bus. You guys have no right because you were definitely watching this game and part of the organization when this happened. Exactly. Yeah. It, you should have known that should've you known. have a history. Yeah, we're a history of this. Uh, okay, next up. Z, you actually got a really good one here. It's, okay. Uh, I'm actually, now I finally believe you again. Yeah, Marty Broder's uh, oh, okay. playoff goalie goal. goalie goal. Yeah, yeah. They need to. Broder. He's got to do like a, a flyby, no? Like, what's how do you he, not go by the what's bench? He, wait, he's what's he the doing? He's banging the ice with his stick and stuff. He looks like he doesn't care even. He's kind of like smiling. He's I think more, he's laughing. You think so? Any goalie goal is an A because we tried it ourselves and it's very difficult. So. That's not best ever, eh? No. Wow. The other one was cool. Kind of like The other one was like a freestyle move. Yeah. Oh, come yeah, on, yeah, a goalie yeah. goal yeah. has to be an A, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that was a nice one. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> quick keep right. Keep going. <laughs> keep, accelerate. Keep it going. I don't know what. Oh, that's rapid fire. This one. So this one's kind of representative. There was two that I, I felt were kind of representative of a lot of goals. So the first one was the David Pasternak one, where it was like, "There's a lot of like kind of nice empty net goals, but at the end of the day, you're like, shouldn't have been on the list. It was an empty net. Shouldn't goal. have been on the list. Okay. No, but we needed one to show like, oh yeah, sometimes people show sick score, sick empty net goals, okay. right? Okay. And then, uh, and then the other one is this one, and it is, mo- Letang and Malkin's combo own goal empty net goal okay. this year. Okay. Well, this is big for the Penguins. They're, they're just trying to kill as much time off. It went in! Oh my goodness! You think that team is going to the playoffs? <laughs> no. <laughs> this just happened. For some reason, I did not click until it went in. I was like, oh, this literally just happened. Yeah, okay. it's such um, an iconic play, man. I so, think it's amazing. I thought so too. And then w- looking at this, this happens a lot. Really? So I, I was gonna say when I saw this, I'm like, man, how's that not happen more often? Because like all you got to be is like a real risque, you get a bad bounce, and that's it. It happens Things quite open. a bit. There's a lot of good ones where like so one, it's happened to Patrick Kane twice, which I thought really? was crazy. Yeah, once was he was in his own, or he was in the nice. offensive zone, and he banks it off the boards, goes by the D man, and goes all the way into the net. And then there's another one just like this, where it kind of like is like a drop play, and they just screwed it up. Then. But there's like other really funny ones where like uh, there's one where like Louis Erickson it's kind of like he's on the Canucks and he tries to put it back and then Eric Goodbranson like fully runs into the net trying to stop it so he like it's it's funny that they score on themselves and then he like and slams like, into the net and it's, it's, he's not hurt <laughs> what why would that be funny oh I just meant like <laughs> funny people fall I don't mean like hurt. Like injured. <laughs> Move on to the next clip. <laughs> well, wait. What do you, who's who's ranking that one? Uh, who did the last? Oh, one? it's me. D. I'm ranking it. Go ahead. I'll decide. D. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna give it a C because it's funny. You're different, huh? I like it. C. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Ridley. Just throw it. Just throw it in the vest. Wow. Yeah, wow. Can do it, can do it. Man, it was such a. It's so iconic. Like. Oh my like, like, god. Like, you can't say that. Can like, you? It's so iconic. Man, I, I I mean more than anything, like the response is obviously part of the play, but like the fact that he just banged a clapper from like three feet away from the net was just dude, epic. To, dude. Dude, like, to be it's fair though, way cooler than any. Cl- clearly, yeah. this just happened, so it's fresh on our memory. So it's huge recency bias. That if he had done what Callie Johansson had done, we're laughing way harder. No. 
But there's actually like strategy. If you went like this and you imagine if you waited and you were like, man, I I get why Callan Johansson did what he did. Like he actually did it to waste a little clock. Really, Greg, just. Like an idiot, just slap shot it because it's just like I hate Toronto. <laughs> this the Battle of Ontario is crazy. This is gonna be hilarious, and it was. And and so fun. Like I, I really price. don't. I don't even think of it that much. Like I just think it's funny. But yeah, like, it's it, funny. it is. I don't even. You're funny. right. He probably didn't think about like all of those things. He's probably just like game. In his yeah, own head, he was just over, yeah, yelling, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, call, I'm calling game. I'm calling game. Like, game. sometimes people yeah. do that in ODR, on, on the ODR. Like, if you get a breakaway on the ODR, and like, because, like, you could never take a slap shot otherwise in the ODR. So you're an absolute it's actually douche, a, by the way. You're actually you a that. douche if you yeah. do that anyways. Because, like, I've seen it hit, like, the crossbar, and, like, and, people like, are still... Out, yeah. And it fires out at other people, and no one's wearing a helmet, and, like... Anyway. Man, yeah, yeah. when we were at the ODR the other day, Corwin took a stick to the jibs. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was because that crazy. guy was going hard. For we got we got to go back soon. Yeah. Anyways, next one. So the accelerator through these. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. So Justin Williams. Uh, this is so this is kind of where we're getting into a territory. We're gonna have a couple like this. Keeper of the cup. So we can really fire through these ones, but because I think they'll probably be in similar categories. Jam along at the half boards, and it came loose. Heading and knifed it on. Brought back up by Stall. Basically clinches the Stanley Cup for them. So the moment. So So the the moment again. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. Not like a nasty goal, but just like, damn, that's... Is this me or is anyone... I guess I really just have to... Like, the history part of it is, like, great, obviously, but, like... I don't know. Let's put a B. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah, fair. Okay. Let's go! Uh, I'm up with... It's eight, an empty net goal. <laughs> I'm up with 802 for uh, Ovi, which... Is it happening against the Jets, though, right? What? It happened against Winnipeg. Oh, did it? If I'm not mistaken. Is it a cool goal? Show it. It's like him, him and Kuznetsov kind of like pass it back a little too much. <laughs> Alex Ovechkin at the line. Feeds it. Kuznetsov doesn't want to shoot it. I'm not sure Ovi wanted to shoot it either. There it is! Yeah, so, like, I don't know. That one is basically, like, he tries to pass it to Kuznetsov instead of shooting, and then, like, Kuznetsov gives – which I think he's being, like, I don't want to score that goal like this. It was how, was how I saw it. Yeah. And then Kuznetsov passes it back to him, and he's like, okay, and just buries it. Because if you're him, you're definitely going to get another goal in your career. Yeah. You don't want to score it like that. Although, to be fair, with the way that the pace of things are going now, like – this might be, like, a Mr. 3000 situation <laughs> where he's like, you know what? I'm glad they I took, roll him out for the power for the power play every time. Yeah, and just like, like, yeah. I'm glad I took the opportunity for any of them. Like, you know, I, I I took every single one. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but like, he needs like three hits. And well, he doesn't he like return because yes. it was like a stat correction or something. So stat then, correction. He stopped at three thousand hits, and they go back, and I think he has to get three or something hits, which does not sound like a lot. But if you are out of the majors for a long time, he literally just can't even hit the ball. I'm so, ranking this right. Yeah, I'm giving this the worst. That kind of like is just like that's such a terrible way to get that milestone. You because like the Jets too. So you rank, yeah, it was you mainly I mainly rank it, it on the worst list. for us. To <laughs> you thought it should be included in this, huh? Well, it's a big moment. Okay. Did you not agree? It's a big moment. It was a monster. No, it's a monster. It's a monster. It's a monster. It's a monster. You, think, you, think, you think passing Gordy Howe is just whatever? No, I think I'm done with this. This <laughs> is what I think. Well, I, something had to be the worst, and I just mean like. Because the one thing that Gretzky had for, like, the 50 and 39, at least, like we said, they celebrated like crazy. He's just kind of like... He's not hyped. Yeah, he's not even excited. They were in those sick jerseys, though. They were wearing those are cool jerseys. jerseys. That's my favorite. All right. Like, what else we got? <laughs> <laughs> this one you're not going to What's like. next, baby? <laughs> now there's, like, a Carl Hagelin one where he's just kind of like... I just find it funny how <laughs> he skates it in. <laughs> but it's for the Stanley Cup final as well. This is the one I was talking about. <laughs> Course back off the boards and Subban can't catch up to it. Along comes Hagelin moving on and he scores! It's like that's to win the Stanley Cup again. So like that's kind of sick. And also, uh, do you guys not find it funny? You how, have to be sure. Yeah, like how careful he was. He like it's really puts it it's on like, his it's stick like and he's like, it's like his oh, yeah. controller disconnected that, for a it's, second. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I, it honestly reminds me of just like the, the putt to win it all. You know, it's, it might be a shorty, but I'm thinking that thing out. I don't mind it that much. I'll, th- I'll throw it in a C. They lost pretty much one nothing. To lose the Stanley Cup? I know, man. man. That's tough. tough. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, that is brutal. That's like, you'll think about that for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's Matt Murray, baby. You'll think about it for a lot longer than you'll think about this list. Uh, Okay, so <laughs> see, you're up with Jake Evans. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, list is, the Winnipeg this list is literally killing me. 
That's why it's been funny about this one. It's the Shifley hit. Is that one? It happened on Empty Netter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. 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 What what put it up. Best put it up. Ever. I actually didn't even remember Best that. Ever. Best ever. <laughs> it might be the greatest. I told you. This- Look. Lots of heart, lots of hustle by Evans, lots of hustle by Shifley. It was on an empty netter. I forgot about that entirely. Canadians are going to clear. Evans is going to get down there first. The net is empty. Can he tuck it in? He does. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a what a hit. No, I'm loving it. his reaction. He's, no, I know. I think he got a reminder of, like, <laughs> that was the biggest hit ever. <laughs> and, like, that's a, that's worthy of every game he got. Uh, but, uh, anyways, uh, worst. I mean, I guess it's on Jake Evans' behalf. Yeah, I don't really know how to it's differentiate tough. those. I still feel awful for you him. Like, that was, worst. Yeah, that was terrible. The dirty hit. But, but, ma'am, don't you think he's going to want you to, like, applaud his effort a little more? I just can't. I don't think we can throw it in an A just because, like, I don't... Mm-mm. I don't think that sends the right I message. actually was like, I was like, ooh. I actually felt bad from when I watched it again. I was like, that is a dirty play. Anyways, next it's ugly. One. Oh, this is one I just included for you. Uh, his ranked one just for Z because he loves this list so much sure. if anyone everyone knows I'm loving this list more than anyone kept in by Eichel on the point but taken by Tuck Tuck to seal it bad angle go look at how fired up he is too of course like, he's pumped Not so this is Eichel's first game back in yes. Buffalo this is also, man, Tuck's also playing against his old team he's playing against his own team for, for, his, for the first for time for his boyhood team too yeah, for his boyhood team. Scores, honestly, a pretty sick empty net goal, too. Like, kind of from a tough angle, banks in and off the post. Yeah. And then, like, and just to confirm, one of the top comments is, this is one of the greatest moments in Buffalo Sabres history. Oh, which is sad. Very but That is pathetic. <laughs> that is we, so pathetic. We are currently ranking empty net goals. So, so I'm going to... Throw it in the worst. No. no I'm just kidding, just kidding. I'll put it in an A. An A? Yeah. Is it that nice, man? That's crazy. A big moment. <laughs> the other, the other bias, moment. Bias. Bias. B, B, maybe? Yeah. Like uh, clearly bias. My bias is to have this list end. <laughs> That's my bias. Well, we got a couple more of you. We got a couple more. <laughs> uh, there's this one. killing me. There's, uh, we'll skip the last one because that's the one that you made me include. So Don't worry. I'll make you <laughs> include it if you'd like. You ready for this? To center for Buchnevich for the empty net. And he scores. Oh. Buchnevich. So he just Why like, did he break it? But nobody really knows. Adrenaline. People thought maybe it was, like, he'd missed a couple chances early in the game and stuff like that. But against like, his old team. Yeah, but like. They won. He just scored a goal. I don't get it at all. Against his old team. Maybe it was just like a, a release. Just smashes his stick. They've also played each other since then. So Yeah. Like it wasn't kind of like weird. first time. It's not at the Garden. No. Huh. It was bizarre. <laughs> mm. One of the weirder plays I've mm. ever seen. D. D. Yeah. Okay. I think that fits. Oh, the wait. Re- the reaction is oh, wait, I'm the right Georgia. The reaction is so funny though. It's so funny. Like It's know. really it weird. It's pretty funny. It is weird. Because like when you're talking about anti-net goals, you have to take into account like the reactions, the sallies. Yeah. There's not fun. much else to consider yeah, with these guys. Yeah, there's not much else. I'll, I'll put it in B. The speed in which the puck enters the net. That one's kind of funny. I'll yeah. put it in B. Yeah. All right, uh, Jesse, you are up with. The net still empty. Dropping back as BX has a goalie. Marshawn, the shot. He scores! Marshawn, second goal of the night. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite part. Yeah. The, he, so they they won like, hey, the you, Stanley Cup, and he turns to the Vancouver Canucks fans. You seeing this? Banging on the glass. Check this out. Like, yeah. You like that? Yeah. Uh, you know what? There was really nothing special about it, but I did like. I did like. I. I did How many like, times have we said that in this whole list? I did like the salt at the end. It was pretty funny. This is just yeah. ranking. So I'll stick it in a C. This is literally just <laughs> ranking the celebration yeah. after empty netters. Yeah. Not even empty net goals. Yeah, well, it's uh, that's the whole thing with all of it. It's just like the whole moment. But uh, that's the whole list, eh? There is one more. We might as well just do it while we're here. The it just you, you guys saw it already. It's the Crosby one where he passes through his like saucer pass to What's Jeff Carter yeah, in a playoff in the, game. In a playoff game, it was like game three, and the th- series was tied one one. So slap me, silly Sydney. <laughs> Sky <laughs> will never not say that now. Slap. <laughs> uh, you're or no, you're up with that one. Ah, uh, deep. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> moving on to don't think, just tweet. Thank you for joining us for that list. Great time. It's a good time. Yeah, where do you rank that to your list? <laughs> D. Uh, not the worst. What's the worst? Probably that one, but I want to be kind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's now time for Don't Think, Just Tweet. Corwin, you've been busy at work. 
running this, so I'm going to give Jesse the first one. You know, whoa. Your hands are nice test here. Whoa, 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 whoa. So following the Super Bowl, Justin Williams, he started a discussion on which sport has the best trophy. He showed himself with the Stanley Cup. Uh, so I want you to rank these five trophies. The Lombardi Trophy, the Great Cup, the Stanley Cup, the World Series Trophy, and the Larry O'Brien. In order of best to worst. Go ahead. I mean, if you're not going with Lord Stanley's mug, then what are you doing? What are you doing out there? It's a good-looking trophy. You can, you, can, you can bring it in the pool. You can drink out of it. You can get a little banged up. You know, if I was take it to the bar, like, take a couple dents, it'll be totally fine. Uh, so I got to go with that, number one. Durability is a big factor as well. Then I'm going to go Larry O'Brien. Because I think Larry O'Brien's cool. I like how it's gold. Very chill. <laughs> Very chill. Very chill. Then I'm going to go with the Super Bowl because – there's just something a little iconic. I know, Z, you're not as big a fan of the Super Bowl. I like the Super Bowl. I just, I think it's made by Tiffany as well. I kind of like the fact that you can just hold the Super Bowl under. Like, it's always so classic when someone goes on the podium and just goes like, yeah, with one hand. <laughs> you know? Like, like, this one's yeah. 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 I'm into that. Uh, then I'm probably going to go with the Grey Cup. Even though the neck's a little skinny on it, you know, you still take it in the pool, hammer some sods out of it. You're really into the pool part. You need it, this. yeah. Oh, yeah. And if it can't go in a pool, it doesn't want it, which the actually po- all of them can go in a pool. The, the, but the part that I'm – well, I mean, the part that I'm most into about the Grey Cup is that you can hammer sods out of it, ripping cold sods. And then the last one has got to be the World Series one because you probably couldn't really bring it in a pool because it would get damaged so easily. That yeah. thing would get damaged Seems anywhere. Fragile. Yeah. If you put yeah, like those... too many hot dogs in it, it'd be yeah. Like... <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna like put hot dogs on all the pendants and stick it over a fire. And yeah, cook my it could be a roaster. It's, it could be it, a roaster. it's like a like rotisserie, like an artillery. Yeah, or, artillery. What's like the guns that? That is artillery. Yeah. What's the ones that like rotate? It's like an yeah. artillery rotisserie. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you brought to something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think again, I, I didn't add it in there, but the MLS Cup trophy, which is similar to pretty much any European football trophy, like it looks like the Premier League. They pretty much just looked at the Premier League and the Champions League and were like, make this a trophy. That is a good looking trophy too, the MLS one. Oh yeah, that one's solid. Actually, and I, I think I probably, I, the only, I would probably put Grey Cup above the, the Super Bowl. Uh, no, above Super Bowl and Larry would be probably. Oh uh, yeah, I would agree with that too. It's it's solid. Again, like big dudes, they like put it up. You're like, wow, this this feels like something. Yeah, just like you guys I like people carry. lifting things like this. I disagree with like ah, like yeah, that's like for an Oscar. I just think the neck of the Grey Cup is so skinny and it's broken before, hasn't it? I think the Memorial Cup. Uh, Probably the Memorial Cup. Yeah, it might be the Memorial Cup. The one thing I was gonna say, you know what? More you said it looks like it, you said the, the the Lombardi Trophy looks like an advertising thing. I think that and the Larry O'B look like MVP trophies. I think it's that's also fair. I mean, because like, like the MVP they, trophy in basketball is not, it looks pretty similar. Like, yeah, well, and and but like because you know like the picture of Kobe, he's got the jacket on and, and he's like so sick, dude. sick picture. Mm-hmm. But I think like when I look at that, it looks like it looks like an MVP trophy of some kind. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. To the uneducated. Well, the Super Bowl. No, I know what it is. I just mean that like that's the vibe I get from the trophy. Sometimes the, I guess isn't the mini MVP isn't it the same as the Super Bowl? It's just like a mini version of the trophy. Yeah. The Conn Smythe is also a sick trophy with Maple Leaf Gardens on it. We should do a tier list on trophies. We should rank the trophies, yeah. Because the Conn Smythe is so sick. Old Maple Leaf Gardens, that's where we played beer league hockey, which yeah. is so sick. Where I went to school, actually. Very and cool. now we're the Toronto PWHL team. Player. Exactly. <laughs> Historic yeah. building. Historic these, building. These eras. <laughs> I know, crazy. All right, uh, next one. Corwin, you're up. <laughs> Thoughts on getting more candid IG posts such as surrogate chefs. I don't know if you, you guys read through that. We'll put it on the screen right now as Corwin is deliberating over his answer here. But uh, suffice it to say, this man was very detailed and very candid about how he felt with that injury, which was super unfortunate. Like, I I loved it. Like, I don't know. I think it's it's a nice peek into how difficult some of these things are, especially injuries. Like, I don't. I think we're so numb to like. ACL tears and like these things that are like such like massive deals for anybody to go through. Like, like for somebody to tear their ACL and like not be able to do whatever for six months and have to rehab through that. Obviously they have a lot of help and it can be easier on these athletes than uh, some other people in terms of just managing the rehab process. 
but like for them, it directly impacts their career, which is a pretty short career. And, uh, and I know it's, it's not a ACL thing for him, but it's like a couple broken bones in there. And like, just, yeah, I don't know. I, you, you, it's, it's a nice glimpse into like how tough some of this stuff really is for these guys. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's like, it's a good insight into just like how some of these, like insight into like the fragility of their career as a whole, where, as you're saying for us, you're like, damn, that sucks. You move on. Yeah. while they're going through months of rehab and because he's had injury issues before it's like all you want to do is go out and you know prove yourself play and and actually be able to do the thing that like you know for him like it's a reason to live right like yeah. it's everything he wants to be doing and instead you're in a gym rehabbing and you're spending all these hours away from your teammates and it's like for us it's just oh man you know you know, best witches and, and see you when you're back. Like, I remember we did an interview with a soccer player on TFC. I'm going to ah, tell this story. Uh, but it, it was with Jonathan Osorio. Yeah. And there was a question that came up um, in the interview. Not from any of not us. Not from any of us. But in the interview, it was like they asked about an ACL injury he had. And immediately he looked at the camera and almost like it broke, like, character of what he was doing in the interview. He's like, hey, like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Hey, like, you know, I healed up from that. I don't really think about that kind of stuff. Like, he was they rattled. Don't want that, he didn't they want, don't want that out there. That he energy. didn't want the energy of it. He didn't, he was like, I don't even want to, like, he was like knocking on wood right away. And it was like, you saw his mind go right back like, to where he probably was when he got hurt, where he was like, it's one of the worst places you could be. So even just seeing it in text form of like, he probably felt way more than what you read there. And if you thought that was like intense to read, I'm sure it feels a lot more intense for that guy. It's also funny, like, People thinking like, oh, he must be on painkillers, and it's like, these guys are on painkillers all the time, <laughs> and they're not very no, candid. Yeah. So. No, yeah, fair point. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was great. I think like Circuit Judge strikes me as a smart guy, and like I think it, I think it's just so nuts that anyone would take issue with someone just coming out and being honest about a hard experience that they went through. Uh, so the next one on a, a little bit more of a light note. The Canes wore Cooper Hall's <laughs> warm up on the throwback night. Are we, you know, is this still a fun thing? Even though it's not in game, I guess it is fun. But like, who's this for? Uh, I think it's Jesse. Yeah. Okay. He's got an opinion. <laughs> Are they still fun, or like, should the NHL bring like, them back? They should just like it'd be fun for the game if both teams had to do it. No. Man, they should absolutely bring them back for, for at least game. one game. I wore a pair of Cooper Hall's in one of our Billy games what and you like? forgot to wear wear actually. I mean, I wasn't wearing pants under and. I fell on my side and just smoked my hip. No padding. But they would, like, you need yeah, to, they would yeah. wear, like, girdles. They wear, like, exactly. girdles. Yeah, yeah. So as long as it's done safely, bring it back, baby. <laughs> and you, Corwin? Because clearly... I just couldn't care less. Yeah. So, like, I just genuinely, like... <laughs> I'm, and I'm this is so... the guy who authored a list of empty net goals. <laughs> yeah. I would honestly rather rank another 70 <laughs> empty net goals. Is this the most boring podcast of all time that we're doing right now like just let us know in the comments seriously yeah <laughs> just like goal horns let us know what video was playing when you woke up after leaving your youtube on <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> sometimes you wake up you're like Whoa. you check your, your yeah, youtube right? you're like what the hell is this how long have you been out for uh okay corwin i mean this one fell on you but actually it really should be jesse's but so maybe it's just both of you uh when we were playing at the odr the other night couldn't help but notice a lot of kids have airpods in there uh which is pretty common airpods of the odr your thoughts on it yeah i honestly i didn't think it was that weird no you, you thought it was really weird seen it for you it's been around I for did, years man i never see that like i see these kids like with one airpod in their ear just on the odr i get it. it's like if you want to vibe out to music that's fine but it's just like i said two ears the man I, was, some kids is fully in yeah, what well, i have some, worn yeah. like like wired ones before the, the only thing for the airpods that would freak me out is like i could see it so so z was literally on a phone call one time with me where i was just yeah. walking down the street and an airpod fell out of my ear bounced off the curb went into the street and a car ran it over immediately Very and funny. then and so it just smashed <laughs> and then i was like oh like, uh, damn which i could totally see happening on the ice because like yeah if, if it fell out and then like fell on the ice it's hard to see one so like i could totally see someone just That'd running be the toughest over it. part like finding that thing because it's gonna bounce too and, and like being like hey everyone stop <laughs> i dropped my airpod yeah the no game cannot continue not a person you can't is helping like, you with that yeah so and they probably shouldn't I, I'm, like, pretty used to it, aside from, like, the ODR. Like, if you go to a skate park, like, kids all have their AirPods, headphones. And when I skate, period, like, I got headphones on. I remember I was skateboarding, like, in my neighborhood. 
and I just was like literally just trying to like all over something very quickly and I just like ate it and the headphones went like flying and someone was just like watching on the car this old guy and he's looking he's like what are you what are you doing <laughs> he's, he was like disgusted by where, the whole thing he was just it. yeah exactly he was just like what, like your headphones over here you're on the ground you're a grown man on a board with four wheels what, what is this <laughs> For me, it's just like the whole concept of just wearing the AirPods during a game of the ODR. It's like, it's kind of just like, it was such a 2024 moment to me. I'm just like looking around, there's all these kids that are way younger than me, just like AirPods in their ears, like, you know, with like the wavy hair and all this. I'm like, what the hell? Like, that, what is going on? I don't think Jesse's ever sounded older than when he went, the wavy hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. From uh, from the freezer tarps to flow. Oh, you yeah. Freezer yeah. Tarps? I, I yeah I, I mean I think it's definitely uh, not as social as you could be when you're at the rink. And yeah, also, it's like when you're at the it's... ODR, you're like you're like chatting it up. You're like maybe if you're by yourself at the ODR, it's fine and just shooting around. But just to sure. do it during a game, I was just like, what is going on here? These guys taking like phone calls during the game right now? That'd be hilarious. I'd yeah. actually fully respect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I went sack and I got to break away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Give me two seconds. Yeah. Anyways, that is the episode. Um, let us know. Uh, what else you would like us to potentially do any tier lists on? And I can tell you. What's the greatest empty net goal of all time? <laughs> Ever. Okay? Cause, oh, oh, actually, man. I guess like one last part of the tier list. Mm. Do we agree? It that should go on. You is, know what actually are we great. putting Ridley at the best? Is that is that what we were decided at? That's I think what, we just moved there. on. Yeah, we kind of yeah. did. But like, are you chill with that? I mean, what I'm going to suggest you're going to be less chill with. Because I think it was already vetoed. What, the Cali Johansson? Yeah, one? I just thought that was cooler. As an act. Nope. I kind of get it in terms and, of, like, it's a the, playoff game. And the Patrick Stevon one should be in there, even though it's not I a I was going to say, we another list we could do is the best empty net misses. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again for another week. We will be back again, and Luca will most likely be back from yeah. the Super Bowl. He's uh, If you didn't like that list, I'm going to cross-check you in the head. <laughs>